Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm going to be reading a book that was written and illustrated by my grandfather, Bernard Weber, for Barnes & Noble Storytime. The book is called Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. This is the house, the house on East 88th Street. Mr. and Mrs. Prim and their son Joshua live in the house on East 88th Street. So does Lyle. Listen. Swish, swash, splash, swoosh. That's Lyle. Lyle the crocodile. It, Lyle was very happy living with the Prim family. He was especially happy when he was being useful, like helping Joshua brush up on schoolwork. But if Lyle was happy, he was making someone else unhappy. Perfectly miserable, in fact. That someone else was Loretta, Mr. Grumps' cat. Mr. Grumps lived just two houses away from the Prims. Whenever his cat caught even the slightest glimpse of Lyle, she would fling herself into a nervous fit. Lyle wanted desperately to win Loretta over. He tried flashing his sweetest, most toothsome smile at her to show her how really friendly he was. But this only frightened the distrustful animal even more. In the end, Mr. Grumps, who was even more excitable than his cat, would burst from the house, shaking an angry fist at Lyle. Something will have to be done about that crocodile he shouted as Lyle fled to the safety of his own house. To take his mind off his troubles with Loretta and Mr. Grumps, Lyle filled his days playing with Joshua and his friends. He loved being it. He could skip double dutch 100 times without missing. It came as no particular surprise that Lyle could high jump, but Loretta, who was just let out for an airing, was surprised. She was terribly surprised. Loretta was so surprised and so shaken, she fled to the nearest tree and no amount of coaxing would bring her down. Not until Mr. Grumps arrived to rescue and comfort her would she consider coming down. Something will have to be done about that crocodile, stormed Mr. Grumps. Now Mr. Grumps was really furious. Now he knew he would be snappy, irritable, and impossible to live with when he returned to his job in a big department store the following day. For the next several days, Mrs. Prim thought it best to keep Lyle close at her side. Together, they fussed about the kitchen, preparing good things for the family to eat. When the weather permitted, they took lunch to the park. Lyle was always one for sharing. They even took trips downtown. There was much to see in the big city and much to do. Mrs. Prim could spend hours just browsing around antique shops. Lyle could spend hours watching building construction. They both loved to ice skate. One day, Mrs. Prim and Lyle went shopping in a big department store. Unfortunately for everyone, it turned out to be the very same store in which Mr. Grumps held an important position. And unfortunately, they were to hear from Mr. Grumps all too soon, for it was his voice that suddenly broke in over the loudspeaker to announce a sale in the pajama department. Immediately, it was as if everyone in the store was in desperate need of pajamas. Separated from Mrs. Prim, Lyle was swept along with the crowd. As they neared the pajama department, Lyle thought he heard a familiar voice. Lyle, Lyle, the voice called out. Lyle recognized the voice all right, and the face as well. The voice and the face belonged to Hector P. Valente, 
star of stage and screen. But what was Signor Valenti up to now? Well, for the moment, it seemed, he was very busy selling pajamas. Lyle remembered unhappily his days of traveling and performing with Signor Valenti. But in spite of everything, the two were delighted to see each other once more. In another part of the store, Mrs. Prim searched frantically for Lyle. Excuse me, she said to the lady at the information booth. Have you seen a crocodile going past? He was wearing a red scarf. No, answered the lady. I have no information about a crocodile wearing a red scarf. Excuse me, said Mrs. Prim to the sporting goods salesman. Have you by chance come across a crocodile? His name is Lyle. Sorry, madam, answered the salesman. I have not come across any crocodiles named Lyle today. Mrs. Prim grew more and more upset. Excuse me, she said to a man wearing a white carnation. I have lost my crocodile and I don't know what to do. Whatever the man answered, Mrs. Prim never heard it, for his voice was lost in a chorus of other voices shouting, more, more. These voices belong to the huge crowd of shoppers surrounding Hector P. Valenti and Lyle. Because they had an audience and because Signor Valenti could not resist showing off, he had persuaded Lyle to join him in a free performance of their old stage act. More, more, the surprised but delighted shoppers called out, forgetting all about wanting or even needing pajamas. Mrs. Prim caught up with them just in time to hear still another voice, charged with fury, shout, what is going on here? This was Mr. Grumps. And when Mr. Grumps saw what was really going on, his face turned red, blue and purple with rage. Madam, he gasped, we do not permit crocodiles in this store, you know. Remove him at once. And you, sir, he said, pointing a dagger-like finger at Signor Valenti, you, sir, are dismissed. Something will have to be done about that crocodile. Those warning words of Mr. Grumps still rang in their ears as they said, said goodbye to Signor Valenti outside the store. Mr. Grumps at last made good his threat to do something about that crocodile. The next day, he appeared at the prim store with papers authorizing Lyle to be committed to the city zoo. The zoo, Mrs. Prim exclaimed miserably. Whatever would Lyle be doing in the zoo? He'll be doing whatever it is normal crocodiles are supposed to be doing, snapped Mr. Grumps, who wasn't being at all nice about it. The Prims examined the papers. They appeared to be in order. There was little they could do, at least for the moment, to prevent Grumps from putting Lyle in the zoo. Lyle's first night was difficult indeed. Not wanting to seem unsociable, he decided to join the other crocodiles who were cozily piled together. Just when he thought he had gotten himself comfortable on top, he awakened to find himself crushed to the very bottom. Lyle's restlessness annoyed the other crocodiles. They all just got up and stomped off in a huff. Lyle was happier during the day when visitors came. He amused everyone with his unusual tricks and before long was the biggest attraction at the zoo. Joshua and Mrs. Prim visited regularly, arms laden with games, toys, and the Turkish caviar Lyle so loved. Mrs. Prim did her best to smile and appear cheerful, but just couldn't hide her concern. Are you feeling all right, dear? She would ask. Are you getting enough rest? Are you making friends with the other crocodiles? Do the lions keep you awake at night? Is the floor too damp? Do the flies pester you? Lyle shook his head yes or no, depending on the question. He tried putting on a brave front, but Mrs. Prim knew very well he was unhappy and fought back her tears. One night, 
a new keeper appeared at Lyle's cage. Surprise, surprise. The new keeper turned out to be none other than Hector P. Valenti, star of stage and screen. Shh, whispered Signor Valenti. I have come to rescue you. Signor Valenti unlocked the door of the cage and an astonished Lyle was set free. You can't go home again, said Signor Valenti when they had put the zoo behind them. Signor Valenti was bursting with ideas. We'll put our old act together again, he said. We'll fly to Australia. They'll love us in Australia. Lyle groaned. The very thought of never seeing the house on East 88th Street again was grim indeed and too much for him to endure. Signor Valenti read his thoughts and decided Lyle should have one last look at the house on East 88th Street. Approaching the now sleeping street, they were suddenly met with a wall of dense smoke. The smoke, they realized with horror, was coming from Mr. Grumps's house. When Signor Valenti ran to signal the alarm, Lyle broke into the house and rescued the still sleeping occupants. A gasping, frightened Mr. Grumps and his cat were led to sa the safety of the street. Now the Prims and the entire neighborhood were awake and witness to Lyle's heroism. Mr. Grumps couldn't thank him enough. Ladies and gentlemen, said Mr. Grumps to the crowd of onlookers, Lyle is the bravest, kindest, most wonderful crocodile in the whole wide world. I would consider it a privilege and a pleasure to have him as our neighbor once more. Hooray, shouted the Prims. Hooray, shouted the crowd. Lyle moved back to the house on East 88th Street that very night. Several days later, a farewell party was given by the Prims for Signor Valenti, who was leaving to seek fortune and adventure in Australia. Remember, said Mr. Grumps, speaking to Signor Valenti, should you change your mind about leaving, a job in my store will always be yours just for the asking. We need people with your kind of talent and ability. Everyone smiled happily, even Loretta.